Christensen, E-A-R-L-O-F-A-R-I-H-U-T-C-H-I-N-S-O-N, President, Los Angeles Urban Policy Roundtable. Within the hour, we're going to be meeting with LAPD Chief Beck, and Chief Beck has assured us that the department has a number of policies, procedures, and training programs in place to deal with those that are suspected of having autistic disabilities. We're happy to see that the LAPD understands the importance of having training programs in place. Uh, unfortunately, it uh, did not prevent the tragedy, the very tragic death, gunning down of um, Stephen Eugene Washington. However, what we're really hopeful for is that since the policies and procedures and trainings in place, that we will not see a repeat of what we saw with Stephen Eugene Washington. We can't bring him back, but certainly we can prevent other tragedies like the, the Washington killing. Also, we are going to um, meet with Chief Beck and we're going to present him to enhance the training programs of the LAPD. Our own recommendations for LAPD command and staff on autism recognition and handling training tips. We don't think given the magnitude of what we saw with the death of Stephen Eugene Washington and the possibility that there could be other tragedies like this. Since we know in the city of Los Angeles and other big cities, there are many people with disabilities and challenges that are on the streets at any one time. Anything could happen. So because of that, we don't think that the department and the chief and command staff could ever have enough training aids. So we're here to help, we're here to support, and we're to, uh, here to enhance what the LAPD has already put in place. Uh, there's two things right away. One, we, it's, it's difficult, of course, to get into the minds of individuals that have autistic challenges. Equally, it's difficult to tell officers who are oftentimes are, have to make split-level decisions whether someone has a challenge, a disability. They're not psychologists. They're not psychiatrists. And in many cases, they're not even trained. And that's part of the problem. What we can say, what we are suggesting here is there has to be a sensitivity level Always understand that any time that you're in a situation where you're confronting a suspect or someone that you suspect is involved with the crime, always as part of your training and discipline, don't just assume that that person is a hardened criminal or even that person is a criminal. There may be challenges. Take a breath, pause, recognition, understanding, and hopefully that will lead to a non-lethal conclusion. In other words, what we're really trying to do is minimize the use of deadly force and also avoid confrontations. So in the checklist here, we have a number of things here that talk about handling, that talk about recognition, that talk about what to do if you suspect someone has a challenge or certainly a disability. So it's a very, very lengthy list of guidelines and specific recommendations. We're going to present those to a Chief Beck. We're going to put him on, put him on his desk, and we're very confident that the Chief, with the sensitivity that he has, will certainly study this, look at this, and implement these guidelines. Sister Heron also has a comment. Uh, yes, my name is Lita Heron, and I represent for the Youth Advocacy Coalition. And uh, we're offering our condolences to the victim's family, of course, because this is a tragedy that nobody could have anticipated, and it calls more in line with what Dr. Hutchinson is asking for in these policy inclusions, and more importantly, uh, the professionalism that needs to be uh, appropriate uh, when you're handling somebody with mental challenges, everything from alcoholism uh, to despair. We're living in very difficult times right now. It's a very dangerous job for law enforcement. We recognize that, but at the same time, we expect and anticipate uh, a higher level of professionalism when it comes to those that are unable or incapable of uh, self-management. You know, that's a tragedy of the highest order that speaks to a lot of the problems of our homeless and uh, folks that have mental challenges. So we appreciate the sensitivity the department has shown. Uh, we really respect the acknowledgement to the family and we're happy to say through the hard work that we put in together, Dr. Hutchinson, myself and our associates, that we have a level of open communication and dialogue with the department that we've never had before. So we see that as very promising. 
uh, we know and are comforted by the fact that the family is going to get full disclosure uh, by the time that this is over because the department is going to do a thorough investigation about this case. So uh, well, we want to thank them for that cooperation. You know, one of the things we're always concerned about, whether it's Stephen Eugene Washington or anyone else for that matter on the street, we're always concerned that you explore other options first. Now we know that there's a, an array of things that police departments and police officers can use. We've talked about this many times, the taser, the bean bags, bean yeah. bullets. Um, and how about something else? If it's clear, and oftentimes they're not always clear, but in some situations where it's clear an individual has a challenge, and certainly is not armed. If that determination is made, conversation, dialogue, talk, an old-fashioned thing called communication. Oftentimes, we've seen so many situations where police officers have talked down suspects. We've seen that time and time again. So we know it can be done. Um, it's very difficult. Split-level decisions have to be made. We're aware of that. But we always just say this. If a life is taken, you can't bring it back. It's better if the situation dictates, and many do situations do dictate that, try to use other means other than deadly force. That wasn't the case with Stephen Eugene Washington, and we're all paying a price for that. And when I say all of us, the family, the friends of Mr. Washington, the department is deeply hurt by it, and they feel yeah. that, and the community is hurt by yeah. it. So anytime these situations happen, it's a dear price that we're all paid. So always remember, communication is best, dialogue is best, and follow training procedures too. Those are the best ways to handle it.